Welcome into Locked On Phillies, and uh, I am proud to inform you. The Philadelphia Phillies are going to the World Series! They won the National League pennant, and we'll recap everything on today's Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies. Your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yes, this is Connor Thomas. I'm your host of Locked On Phillies. I want to thank you making Locked On for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I do want to let you know today's episode of Locked On Phillies is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. Twenty four seven monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafecom MLB to learn more. And with that out of the way. I said it in the open, and I'll say it again. And I apologize. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's ears. But the Philadelphia Phillies are going to the World Series. They have won the National League pennant. They have dispatched the San Diego Padres after also knocking off the Atlanta Braves, after sweeping the St. Louis Cardinals, after winning 87 regular season games and being the lowest seed in the playoffs. The very last team in, and they're going to the World Series. <laughs> it was an 11-year playoff drought, and the Phillies wasted no time ending the playoff drought, the playoff series winning drought, and the World Series appearance drought in the same postseason. It's absolutely incredible. What this team has done is it's amazing. This city is on fire right now for the Philadelphia Phillies because the team is on fire right now. And uh, it, it is a team game. We're going to talk plenty about the team in today's episode. Uh, I mean, it's hard to even collect my thoughts. And this is this is on Monday. This is the day after everything. Uh, unfortunately, sorry for a slight delay in the episode. Believe it or not, I spent the day celebrating the Phillies World Series birth by spending it all in jury duty, virtual jury duty. So I just got done eight hours of sitting on my computer in a virtual Zoom jury duty, uh, jury selection thing who knows the world is weird right now the philadelphia phillies just are absolutely on fire and who who knows what's going on and we'll have plenty to talk about the team that's what i was getting to anyway but there's one individual that i need to talk about first bryce aaron max harper 13 years 330 million dollars so many people called him overrated so many people called him overpaid. So many people called him washed. So many people called him not clutch. So many people called him injury prone. So many people called him a bad base runner, a bad fielder, not a good leader, not mature enough, not a guy that's going to be vocal in the clubhouse, not a guy that's a winner, a guy that constantly misses October, a guy that when he gets there isn't good enough to put his team on his back, a guy that can't win another MVP did that last year a guy that can't be that guy in the national league east on a different team because he couldn't do it with the washington nationals because the phillies aren't good enough a guy that wasn't worth the money because machado was better or you should have gone and got a pitcher or you should have gone and got correa the next year or you should have gone and got countless other and correa was this past year it's just there's countless other guys that i heard other fan bases and this fan base and People in general tell me was better than Bryce Harper, or more worth the money than Bryce Harper, or was more evenly rated than Bryce Harper. And <laughs> can't tell us anything now. That man is the best baseball player in the universe right now. He's on another, not even another planet. There's not a planet that exists that has a life form even close to the ability that Bryce Harper has to play the game of baseball. He's incredible. He's putting together the best postseason by a Philadelphia Phillies player of all time. He's absolutely incredible. And what he did in the clinching game, down 3-2 in the <laughs> in the eighth inning. And uh, just the go-ahead two-run home run over 
the left field wall at Citizens Bank Park, just absolutely creating what was called bedlam at the bank. And what was also called on the TV broadcast, the swing of his life. Uh, I mean, there's no better way to put it, right? That absolutely was the swing of Bryce Harper's life to make it a 4-3 ball game. He has been worth every single penny. And John Middleton, the Phillies owner, talked to him post-game on the field. Uh, and the cameras caught him talking to him. And, and uh, they asked what he said. And he said, man, I know you're making $330 million, Bryce. I'm underpaying you. And he's right. That man's worth every penny of any contract the Phillies would ever have been willing to give him. <laughs> Un unbelievable. How often... Do you see a guy get the big contract and go into a spot with a, a starved fan base, a team that needs to win? And that's why you throw money at these guys, right? So they come in and they lead you to the postseason. Then when they get to the postseason, they lead you through the postseason. And when the moment is biggest, they put the team on their back and they come through like no one else on the planet can. And that's why they make that money. You don't see it that often because it doesn't happen. Guys get paid, sure. And then, I don't know, they already get paid so the motivation drops off. Or... They're good, but not quite up to the expectations that you had because giving that amount of money to any one player just raises expectations almost impossibly high. Or they're good enough in the regular season. They win an MVP and in their individual greatness, but it's baseball, and they just don't get the opportunity or don't do enough to carry the team through the postseason or to get them there or when they get there in the biggest moments. It's not them. Or you know what? The guys that get out, because even the great ones, the guys that get out seven out of ten times, the great players in baseball, well, those times where they need to be at their best, it's one of those seven times that they get out. And whose fault is that? It's not necessarily theirs. It's just so hard to be consistently clutch and carrying a team and be incredibly impactful in all of your bats as a Major League Baseball player, especially in a championship series, the second biggest stage in baseball, to send your team to the biggest stage in baseball. And Bryce Harper has done every single bit of that. He's He's been absolutely incredible for this team he's been unstoppable he's a man on a mission he's a, he's a terror he's the most dangerous person on the planet when it comes to playing a baseball game right now and he plays for the philadelphia phillies and will continue to do so for <laughs> nearly another decade man that feels so good to say and that is why he took home the national league championship series mvp trophy and the phillies he's a huge reason why they won that series but it wasn't just him Zach Wheeler, incredible yesterday. Absolutely incredible. Got you to where you needed to be to compete in that game long enough. I know the weather got rough and he kind of lost control at the end. And then the bullpen had a rough time. Sir Anthony Dominguez had it rough because of uh, because of the weather. And I didn't think that inning where Sir Anthony Dominguez had three wild pitches should have been played. I think it should have been delayed. But listen, you fight through as a team. You hold the rope. J.T. Ramuto gets a big single before the Bryce Harper home run. Connor Brogdon uh, has a big inning in the game where you needed a holdover when, when you had issues with Aaron Nola out in San Diego. Like that was just uh, – or no, sorry, at, at home. And then you get Clevenger. And sorry, it wasn't Nola. It was Bailey Falter. I can't collect my thoughts right now. When Bailey Falter struggled and you had to go to Connor Brogdon in uh, the game on Saturday, he holds the rope. Top guy in the bullpen, bottom guy in the bullpen both out there. Ranger Suarez, not even a guy in the bullpen. Get your final outs of the game. Uh, top of the lineup, bottom of the lineup. Bryce Harper, incredible. But then you look at guys like Brandon Marsh and Edmundo Sosa and Matt Veerling and Bryson Stott and guys down there, Gene Segura, who bats down in the bottom of the lineup. Huge hits from all of them. It was just the team continues to be incredible. And we're going to talk more coming up in the next segment about the, the specialness of the way this team is playing together right now and the magic and the intangibles and everything. And this is more of an individual look at it in this first segment, but, but still uh, it's an individual team sport, right? And it starts on the individual level. You take care of your bat as a person. And that's what the Phillies have done so well. Like Bryce Harper, JT Romito, Reese Hoskins. How have I not, how have I not mentioned Reese Hoskins at this point? We're nine and a half minutes in. He had two home runs on Saturday. He had one home run, a huge one, to put them up early yesterday in the clinching game. Reese Hoskins, you, you could have easily picked him for the NLCS MVP. And you know what? He might have deserved it before the eighth inning happened yesterday. And Bryce Harper became the, the greatest hero 
in Philadelphia baseball since uh, I don't know who, Brad Lidge, <laughs> Cole Hamels, Jimmy Rollins, Matt Stairs. Like it's incredible the names that are going to be held next to Bryce Harper's in Philadelphia Phillies playoff lore. And Bryce Harper may just have the biggest moment of all of them so far. It, it's it's unfathomable. And coming up next, we're going to talk about the team and a little bit more of the, the tangible things, the things that they've been doing that I've been seeing on the baseball field, not just reveling in the glory of going to the World Series, but how they got there, why they're here, why they were able to beat San Diego, stuff like that. It, it's so fun. This is going to be such a fun week of stuff leading up to the Friday night in the first game of the World Series. But man, I'll continue to say it throughout this episode, throughout this week, throughout maybe the rest of the time. Philadelphia Phillies are your 2022 National League champions, and they're heading to the World Series. And coming up next, we'll talk about the team as a whole and how they did it. All right, I want to tell you about my friends over at Simply Safe. Now, you've heard, if you listen to Locked On Phillies, you've heard my ringing endorsement of Simply Safe because I trust them personally. We had a break in at my mom's house. She lives on her own. My brother and I were both moved out. We're living in our own places. And I can't leave my mom at home just without the best protection offered. And that's why we set her up with Simply Safe. As soon as that break in happened, we needed something that could put her back peace of mind. And Simply Safe does that because they have awesome protection. You know, I always say that, and that, that's great. And that's my personal experience with Simply Safe. Uh, I enjoy our other sponsors, and we have a bunch of great ones on here. And I will continue to tell you why I enjoy each and every one of their products. And I'm not a person who just like BSs through these. Like I use all of these products. I enjoy the ones I tell you about. Uh, I really do have faith in these. But there's another level to entrusting your mother's safety to a company. And that's what I do with Simply Safe. Here's here's another thing. And this is a little bit more of a selfish reason, but this is good for Simply Safe. I was in jury duty all day today. The court system stinks. I don't want more people to have to go to court and jury duty over break-ins and stuff like that. Simply safe, go ahead and get it. Deter people from ever wanting to try and try and take away your stuff and break into your home. No, use Simply Safe because they're the absolute best. Get people out of jury duty, keep your peace of mind, make everybody safer. That's why Simply Safe is awesome. And here's what I want you to do: don't miss your chance to save big as well. So you're going to be able to protect your home with the best and also get 40% off your order. All you got to do is visit simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Now, I apologize for how my voice is sounding. It's a little bit uh, raspy because I was yelling last night. I was out for the game. I went to Broad Street. I I posted some of those videos on my personal account at Connor Thomas 975. You can check that out there. We were um the city of Philadelphia was on one last night. Climbing telephone poles, the rain, and because it was raining steadily throughout the afternoon yesterday. Watched all of the grease they used to put on the telephone poles. So people were climbing the poles. There were fireworks, there were beers being thrown around and beverages and everything. Or, I saw people aged 90 plus. I saw people 10 and under. There were so many people out there. Kids, grandparents, parents, sons, daughters. It was just, it was a collection of humanity all celebrating the Philadelphia Phillies centered around Center City, Philadelphia. I was right in the mix of it. Uh, and then I had to go to the studio last night and do a couple things over there for uh, sports talk. It was just, a, it was a busy night. So forgive me if I sound a little raspy, but let's talk about the team and how they got here and the characteristics of this Philadelphia Phillies team that makes them so dangerous. First of all, I told you coming into the series, in order to beat the Philadelphia Phillies in the playoffs, some team is going to have to beat not Aaron Nola, not Zach Wheeler, both Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler, not just one of them. Listen, Aaron Nola didn't have a great start in San Diego. He got shelled a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't matter because <laughs> Wheeler had already won game one. You look at it and you, you come out and you have Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler going back to back in Philadelphia here. Like, or sorry, Wheeler going following. I, I keep thinking Aaron Nola through because I'm still, uh, it's weird that he had such a short start in San Diego. I'm so used to him being dominant, but now Nola on complete rest will be ready to go for the World Series and could very well get the ball in game one there. But yeah, you would have had to see Nola in uh, game six in San Diego if it had gone that far. And who knows what would have happened in game seven, who would have thrown there. But 
you have to be Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler to knock this team out, and no one's able to do it because they're absolutely incredible. We'll discuss what the Astros and just a little bit of programming note. We're going to have a crossover with Locked On Astros and the folks over there. Uh, later this week, we're going to have a crossover. I believe I'm going to do one with Ethan Smith, the host of Locked On Pirates, a little Pennsylvania celebration of our team going to the World Series. I've had a lot of people throughout the Locked On Network reach out to, to want to cross over, want to do an interview, want to check in. So we're going to have a lot of content coming out ahead of the World Series. One of the last two teams in baseball. So we have a whole network of podcast hosts just behind us, pushing out content, keep an eye on everything from folks over uh, Sully on Locked On MLB, Paul Francis Sullivan, and check out everything from uh, all of our MLB accounts as they talk about how the World Series affects their team, their thoughts on the Phillies, and everything like that. So great content coming. But the team. First off, we talked about the starting pitching already. But then on top of that, look at the bullpen. Now, Connor Brogdon has had really, really rough moments this uh, this postseason, this season, everything. Brad Hand hasn't been perfect. Um, Andrew Bellotti's been really good for what you're paying him, but ultimately has a ceiling as an arm. Uh, but you look at those guys, and they've just been – they were clutch this series. They were really big. Bellotti had huge outings. Connor Brogdon had a huge outing in relief of, um, of Bailey Falter uh, on Saturday. You look at the other guys in the middle, like Noah Syndergaard has been really good in the postseason. The bullpen is back into the form that they were in when they were nearly unhittable. And the most important pieces are two guys to me. Obviously, Jose Alvarado and Sir Anthony Dominguez, right? But they are untouchable pretty much. You're throwing 100 from the right side, 100 from the left side. They have a saying, strike one, strike two, good luck. That's basically what it is because they're nasty. So lockdown starting pitching. Lockdown bullpen and two guys that can get anybody out consistently over and over and over again. And then the lineup that's just deep. The top of the lineup was really good in this series. But in the Braves and Cardinals series, the bottom of the lineup was really good. And it's not like those guys completely slouched off in the NLCS. They had a couple big hits. But like Brandon Marsh was really, really quiet in the series. Bryson Stott had some big hits in the series, though, to even it out. Like any given day, it could be one of these guys. There is no, and I don't want to pile onto the guy because we've already eliminated the Padres. And frankly, I really liked the season that the San Diego Padres had. Uh, I, I didn't really have all that much animosity for that team. The way I did the Braves, obviously divisional. The way I did the Cardinals, because they ended the Ryan Howard, Chase Utley, Jimmy Rollins run. No, this Padres team, like, I'm not a huge fan of Juan Soto just because he's in the division, but I respect him as a baseball player. I hate Manny Machado's guts, but I understand how good he is as a ball player. And then some of the other guys, I think they have a likable team. But so I'm, I'm not piling on. But when I compare the bottom of their lineup, I see like an Austin Nola or I see a Trent Grisham who is over in the series. Like the Phillies don't have those guys. They have guys that'll go over in a game, maybe two games, but anyone's capable of a big hit. The Padres just felt like they had a couple guys in the lineup that were non-competitive. The Phillies don't have that. They have a complete lineup, and even in the, the times that Brandon Marsh gets out, it'll be a four or five, six pitch at bat. In times that Bryce Stock gets out, it'll be an eight pitch at bat. In times that Matt Veerling, when he's in, gets out, he'll work the count. He'll foul off some pitches. He'll hit the ball hard and make you work for it because this is a deep lineup out of nowhere. It's crazy. So that's also good. And then the one other thing that we got to talk about that holds this team together, Rob Thompson's incredible. He made some managerial decisions in this series that I disagreed with. I didn't think that pulling Wheeler in game one was a good idea out there in uh, San Diego. It ended up working out. I, I thought Wheeler was dicing. I didn't think that going to Connor Brogdon to relieve Bailey Falter in Saturday's game was the right move. Very much worked out. Brogdon was huge in the comeback in the 10-6 win in game, what was that, game four. Uh, there were a couple decisions as far as not using a defensive replacement in San Diego when Alec Bohm had that play in game one where he almost threw the – well, he did throw the ball away, but luckily the Phillies got out of it. Like There were some things I didn't totally agree with, but – Things just seem to work out for Rob Thompson. He plays by not the analytics, just baseball rules. What seems logical? You can explain all the decisions that Rob Thompson is making. 
whether you agree with him or not, he will have a valid baseball reason for it. And while I employ a different school of thought than him on some decisions he's made, you can't argue with the results. The Phillies have only lost two games so far this postseason. They're both on the road. They're undefeated at home. The fan base is incredible. The coaching, the manager is incredible. Like Kevin Long has been incredible as, as pitching or as hitting coach. Kale Coffin is pitching coach. Like everyone's been really, really good for the Philadelphia Phillies. And that's what it takes to be a World Series team. But the chemistry these guys have too cannot be understated. Uh, it's been a magical run. And it's going to continue for at least four more games, maybe five, if the Astros decide they want to win a game. No, I'm kidding. They're undefeated in the postseason themselves and not just at home in general. So it's going to be tough to beat the San Diego, or the San Diego Padres, to beat the Houston Astros. But it's doable. And over the next couple of days, I don't want to blow all of my material in one show because we have plenty of time leading up to the series. It's Monday. We're going to have an episode today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, a preview on Friday, a recap on Saturday. We're going to be running like crazy to get everything going for you for this run that the Philadelphia Phillies are still on. But I'll tell you what, coming up in this final segment, I'll give a little glimpse into my thought process as to why I'm taking the Philadelphia Phillies in this series. It's not just a homer take. We'll get to that coming up as we lock up today's episode of Locked on Phillies. All right, let's get into just a little glimpse into my reasoning behind why the Philadelphia Phillies are going to be able to take down the Houston Astros. First of all, history tells us that they will. There only have been a couple teams that have ever gone undefeated in an entire postseason going into the uh, World Series. Every single one of those teams has lost. Hey, and not just a game, I mean, lost the World Series. There's been no team that's gone perfect through the playoffs in Major League Baseball history, I believe. So, hey, that means, well, signs point towards the Phillies historically. But let's talk about the modern team. Two principles that I'm going to dive into throughout this week. Streakiness, an individual team sport. Let's start with that second one. Baseball is an individual team sport. Meaning that it's not like football where everybody's working for the same goal on the same play. It's not like basketball where you're running sets and in constant motion or hockey where you've got these constant line changes and you're so used to your line and you've got to have that chemistry with each other. No, it's very much single opportunities. A fly ball can only be caught by one player. A player can only have their own at bat. You don't get two guys go to the plate at once. A pitcher, there's only one on the mound at a time. There's only one catcher back there. It's a very individualized team. And how does that help the Phillies? Well, it helps them in that the Astros are the better team. But the Philadelphia Phillies have a handful of the best players. Maybe the Astros are overall better, and it seems their record would show that. But there's an argument to be made, and I will make it over the next couple of days, that the best players in this series are going to be wearing red pinstripes. That's one, and the other one is streakiness. The Astros, they've been really consistent. The Phillies have been really streaky. In over 162 games, consistency is king. That's how you become a team that continues to go to the playoffs and go to the World Series, it feels like, every year, like the Houston Astros do. But this isn't a 162-game series. It's seven games. And sometimes streakiness can pay off in small sample sizes. We're going to break down all of that as we go throughout the week. But that's just a little preview into what my big preview of the World Series is going to be. We'll talk to a bunch of people. We're going to do a bunch of different content for you. We're going to revel more in the victory that the Philadelphia Phillies had because it still is sinking into me that Bryce Harper just had the biggest Philadelphia sports moment since the Philly special in the Super Bowl in 2017. And it may be the biggest home run in Philadelphia Phillies history, and I don't know how to even fathom that right now. But – We'll have plenty of time to break it down as we await the World Series starting on Friday in Houston against the Astros. And it just, oh my goodness, it's going to be a fun, fun rest of this run. Already has been better than our wildest dreams. I want to thank you one more time for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now make your second listen Locked On Sports Today. The Locked On Sports Today podcast has the biggest stories of the day plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Let me tell you, I've been dominating the content on the Locked On Sports Today podcast because, well, the Phillies are the biggest story in baseball. The Astros are chalk. 
No one cares about chalk. Oh, the best team won again? Oh, who cares? No, they want the underdog that's hitting the crazy home runs and burning their stadium and city to the ground when they win. And the exciting Bryce Harper and the pitchers that struggled at points that are now putting it all together and the lineup of guys that couldn't quite get into the postseason and now the second they have are poised to win it all. Yeah, that's what they want. And that's what you're going to be hearing on Locked On Sports today. Uh, along with, of course, news around everywhere, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, NFL, Eagles undefeated, by the way. Check it all out. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Man, that's all the time for today's show, and it was a fun one. Tomorrow's going to be a fun one. Wednesday's going to be a fun one. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It might be a fun one forever, as long as the Phillies keep going on this magical run. And tell you what, Topper, we got four more. I'll talk to you tomorrow on the next Locked on Phillies.